Go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To all of those who are here today, welcome back. And to everyone out there in Facebook land, good morning and welcome to our celebration of the liturgy. We are an emergent church practicing an ancient faith in new ways. A church of inclusivity where all are welcome. Today is the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. From the first reading to the Gospel today, the key theme is forgiveness. The spirit of reconciliation grows out of compassionate and merciful hearts, and in lives that embody the Christian practice that Jesus Christ taught us from the cross. His redemption engages Christians in a different way of looking at reality and at their neighbors, a way that frequently opposes the manner in which cultural traditions tend to resolve conflicts. As Christians, we are called to deny the way of vengeance and embrace the way of forgiveness. Please stand as we sing our gathering song, Lift Up Your Heart.
challenge our ways and drive anger far from our far away from our hearts so that we who so much need mercy ourselves may forgive our brothers and sisters from the heart as often as is easily as we should and would have you would have you forgive us we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. 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 Please be seated. Let us allow ourselves to be inspired by the sacred scriptures. A reading. From the book of Sirah. Resentment and anger. These are foul things too. And a sinner is an expert at them both. Whoever accepts vengeance will experience the vengeance of God, who gives strict account of sin. Pardon your neighbor any wrongs done to you. And then when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If you nurse anger against another, how can you de demand compassion from God? If you show no mercy for someone like yourself, how can you then plead for your own sins to be forgiven? Mere creature of flesh, yet cherishing resentment. Who do you think will forgive you for sinning? Remember your last days and set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and be faithful to the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not hate your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High 
and do not take offense at your neighbor's sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the letter of Paul to the church that is in Rome. For not one of us lives just for oneself, and not one of us dies for oneself alone. For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both, the dead and the living. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He could not pay. So his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please, please be patient with me and I will repay it all. Then his master was filled with mercy for him and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few hundred dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me. I will repay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man whose debt he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to suffer until he had paid his entire debt. That is what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is the virtue of forgiveness and mercy. And so if we are forgiving and merciful, 
we will hear the words of Jesus with the promise, for those who are merciful shall receive mercy. So we are dependent upon God for our own forgiveness, but we are also dependent upon God to enable us to forgive others. Now, Jesus likes to liken the kingdom of heaven to a great banquet feast, and he invites everyone to come in. And we're welcome to come in because all are welcome to the banquet of Jesus. But you can't bring in all this baggage. It won't fit. There's no room for it. So if you want to go into the banquet of the kingdom of heaven, then you have to let go of all that excess baggage like resentment and unforgiveness and hatred. These things will only keep you out of the kingdom of God. We need these things. So we need to forgive one another. But how do we do it? It's so hard to forgive. There's nothing like a bruised ego that finds it so hard to forgive. So we don't have to wait upon our bruised ego to get come to its senses. We can actually go to God right now and ask him for the ability to forgive others because it's only through the gift of grace that we are able to forgive others, that we're able even to believe in God. You believe in God because God touched your heart. It's a gift. You can forgive others because God has forgiven you. It's a gift. And you can pray to be a forgiving person. And that's the way it begins. And so, my brothers and sisters, when it comes down to it, it's all about forgiveness. God forgives us in the same way we forgive others. And we forgive others because God gives us that ability to forgive others. And that, my brothers and sisters, is almost the whole gospel I have for you this morning, but uh, I asked my wife to play a song about forgiveness that Don Henley wrote that I think is relevant to us today. Listen carefully.
Reminding us that forgiveness is all about being reconciled with ourselves more than uh, the others, so, so that we can live peacefully and we can live more happy and more relaxed and reconciled to God. So we profess our faith toward God as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. And unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory, to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has yes, spoken through the prophets, who believe in one holy, holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Remembering the covenant the Most High has made with us, let us pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, to whom we belong. Our prayer response is, Be merciful, O Lord. For the church, may we be reconcilers and peacemakers, extending ourselves in passionate care and empathy to the alienated, the unloved, and the wounded, offering hope to those who are overwhelmed by the stress of these times. We pray, be merciful, be merciful, O Lord. Lord. For the grace of tough love, may we provide direction to people who are hurting themselves or others. May we be open to those who confront us with honesty and strong enough to amend our ways. We pray, be merciful, O Lord. Lord. For our parish ministries of social justice and community outreach, May we bear witness that we do not live for ourselves alone, but as servants of God and of each other, we pray. Be merciful, O Lord. Lord. For this assembly, united in baptism and reconciliation, may we bear witness to God's unconditional love by forgiving one another from our hearts. We pray. Be merciful, O Lord. May we have the courage to forgive those who have hurt us and the strength to rebuild relationships. <coughs> Keep us aware of the many unconscious ways we promote systemic racism and exercise prejudice. Help us open our minds and our hearts. We pray. Be merciful, Lord. Lord. For students, teachers, administrators, and school workers, 
May this be a time of safety for them and their families, we pray. Be merciful, O Lord. For all who suffer through violence, natural disaster, and the trials of this pandemic, for all who are sick, dying, or grieving, for those who have lost family or friends to COVID, for all who are addicted, depressed, and afraid. May we hope, may hope and healing be showered upon us, we pray. Be merciful, Lord. May all those who have walked through the darkness of death be taken by the hand of Jesus into the joyful celebration of his eternal banquet of glory. We pray. Be merciful, Lord. For the intentions we hold deep in our silence or out loud. I'd like to say a prayer for my mom who continues to suffer from double vision. I hope that she is relieved from her suffering soon. I'd also like to say a prayer for our Deacon Jay who is going in for a second foot surgery this week. I hope that the surgeons are skilled and that he heals quickly. And lastly, I'd like to say a prayer for my for my cousin Stacy, who passed away suddenly this week or this weekend. May her family find um, may, may her family find strength during this very difficult time. We pray. Be merciful, Be merciful oh Lord. Lord. Um, I'd like to say a prayer for my mother. In here that she passed, and also her mind. Be merciful, Lord. And the first of my granddaughter, who's pregnant, Jeopardy, Jeopardy. Be merciful, Lord. And for Dr. Ellie, who was admitted to the hospital this week, we pray. Be merciful, Lord. For Luke Clancy, who lost her mother, we pray. Be merciful, Lord. Be merciful, O Lord. I would like to pray for my wife who uh, stood beside me for 24 years this month of September. We pray. We pray. Be, merciful. Be merciful, O Lord. And for our dear Yatina who celebrates her birthday today. May she have a wonderful, wonderful year and let her beauty shine. Happy birthday, Yatina. We pray. Be merciful, Lord. Merciful God, receive our prayers and grant us the peace and reconciliation that was made available through the suffering and death of your only, your Holy Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. If you live together, you may exchange a hug, a kiss, and a sign of peace. If not, just bow reverently to each other and wish each other peace. Let us offer a, a sign of peace. offer our prayers and intentions and we prepare our offerings of bread and wine.
and brothers, that these are sacrifices made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and assurance for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all the church. Loving God, accept these gifts we now offer unto you, taken from the earth and transformed by human hands into bread and wine from this for this table. May these gifts be transformed by your spirit into the presence of Christ. And may those of us who receive these gifts be transformed into his image. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in God, thanks and praise. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, your beloved Son, Jesus, came into the world to proclaim the gospel of your great love for us. Jesus taught his disciples the way of forgiveness. He teaches us that there is to be no end to our willingness to forgive, to forgive others. He demonstrated his own. He demonstrated this on the day of his death upon the cross, when he prayed that you would forgive his tor tormentors because they knew not what they were doing. He also prayed that you would forgive us our many sins and through his sacrifice on the cross to reconcile us to you, that we would no longer live for ourselves, but to live always in you as servants of reconciliation. In raising Jesus up from death, you also raised us up to a new and eternal life of unending love and everlasting peace. Therefore, in our unending joy and gratitude, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as we sing forever to your glory. Dying you, 
calling to mind the death of your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Lord, remember your church throughout the whole world. Make us grow in love. Together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, a sign of the worldwide Catholic tradition. Remember Bartholomew, the Patriarch of Constantinople, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Archbishop of Utrecht, all bishops, especially our Bishop Peter, and all the clergy. Remember this, this community of faith and all people who worship in the heritage handed down to us from Mary Magdalene, the Apostle to the Apostles, Peter and Paul, James and John, Matthew and Andrew, Andronicus and Junia, and all your apostles and the eyewitnesses of your son's resurrection. Remember our Protestant and evangelical brothers and sisters and their leaders who share with us the saving message of the gospel of Christ. Remember our Jewish brothers and sisters. Remember our pe the people of Israel from whom we have received the law and the prophets and the wisdom of Sirach, the evangelists Paul and Matthew, and finally, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. May your grace pierce the veils that separate us. May the inspiration of your Spirit make us one on the path of wisdom. And may the brilliant light of Christ lead us to discover your love in every human heart. Hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you today. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. All together we proclaim. Mm -hmm.
God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his suffering. Lord, I am worthy to receive you, and all this word shall be endured. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to that life which is everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare ourselves for our communion. And for those of us who are following us live streaming on Facebook, we will continue with the regular spiritual communion. And uh, for those who would want to drop by later on, we will have our drive-through communion. So, Lord Jesus Christ, we recognize your presence in the sacrament of, Euc of the Eucharist through your body and blood. We accept you of our, as our Lord and Savior. Forgive us our sins through human frailties, and we recognize that you are the bread coming down from heaven to nourish us, body and soul. And for those who receive the communion, just raise your hand and Pico de Delia will go to you. No need to line up.
Let us pray. Please all stand. Loving God, refreshed by Christ's words and nourished by his body and blood, may we be empowered to live always in the Spirit, so that we, along with all creation, may be transformed into the glory of your perfect love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have announcements today. Tammy. So just remember next weekend we have our food drive. Every first and third Sunday um, we collect food and um, things for the homeless and for the WSWA workers. Um, this month's theme is um, also for those uh, individuals that are not able to get out, mostly senior citizens. So there is a list on um, our Facebook page on things that we're looking for for collection. So if you can bring those things, that would be great. Thanks. And our meditation song this morning is Happy Birthday to Get It. Okay. And let's all sing it together. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday. Together in Christ, we will overcome because prayer will triumph over a pandemic or any challenge you are facing. Just know that you don't have to face it alone, for we are here to help you any way that we can. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I want to give a special thanks to that wonderful male voice behind me, yeah, yeah. Mr. Paul. Yeah. Thank you. 